Yeah. The other day, this guy was like, yo, man, what's good with all that theology? Give us something practical. And I was like, word? Okay, <laughs> check this out. I know it's deep, but when you keep your find sense, yeah. Jesus both God and man, 200%, 200%. yeah. Fully divine, fully human. Introducing the hypostatic union. The hypostatic union. I know it's deep, but when you keep your find sense, yeah. Jesus both God and man, 200%, 200%. yeah. Fully divine, fully human. Introducing Hello, it's me again, the guy who runs What Shall I Cry Ministries, doing a podcast. As always, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Brad, the shape shifting vision casting leader. Say hi, Brad. Welcome to my life. Uh, today we're going to be talking about lying. Uh, Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 7 that we could recognize false teachers by their fruit. One of the fruits of a false teacher is that, well, they lie. They tell lies. They say things that aren't true. And I'm not just talking about doctrinal falsehoods. They, they lie about other things. Uh, here in this segment, we're going to be listening to self-proclaimed prophet Doug Addison, and let's see if we can catch him lying. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18 tells us that the mark of a true prophet is that he speaks the truth. So let's see if Doug Addison speaks the truth. Here we go. What I want to what I want to do is to those of you that are here, those of you that are watching, to introduce to you number one, my friend Doug Addison who I love, and we met, I don't know how many, 10, 10 years ago or something like that, and uh, maybe eight, but we have had an absolutely incredible time, revelation. Uh, I'm one of his, I'm going to say personal prayer partners. You've got intercessors, but then you've got somebody that you can turn to. I call it bringing the big bucks, so to speak. Called 11 o'clock at night. That's right. And anywhere in the world, I'll take his call as long as I'm awake, because I have my phone off when I'm sleeping, and we'll pray together and we'll stand together. And there's been some many rounds of touches of death in our time of knowing each other. And this is the best I've ever seen him health-wise. And I am so incredibly excited. Amen. Wow. And so we have blankets. We have purple ones that say miracles happen. It's a miracle blanket. My blanket, Charlie Brown. My blanket, I can't be without it. Okay, we also have some blue ones that say miracles happen, some baby ones too. This is Joan Hunter of Joan Hunter Ministries. She sells these blankets on her website for 50 to $111, I guess, depending on the size of the miracle you want. <clears throat> I'll take an extra large miracle with an order of fries, please. And I, what I did is I took one of these and I wrapped myself in it, round the clock, nighttime, bed, everything. And I just wanted any ounce of anointing to go from this, to go to California as a point of contact for my friend to be healed. Apparently she wrapped this around her so that the anointing she had would ooze out of her and seep into it so she could send it to Doug Addison. That's gross. Now, not Doug Addison, the speaker, my friend. And so he he got this. And and what he did is he wrapped himself in it. Kind of like a prayer shawl. Yeah. And I'm going to let you take over from yeah. here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for doing this. And. And uh, I am totally healed now. You're the wacky doctor. Battery's not included. There was reports that I would get healed and then it would come back. Get healed, come back. Get around Joan, get healed. Get around Todd Bentley, get healed. Did Todd punch you in the face? Because that seems to be his Holy Spirit M.O. And I hope you kept your wife away from him. He's, um, well, he's, he's quite the philanderer. Y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. Come back. But then the Lord gave me deeper revelation in, into that. He says the Lord gave him deeper revelation. <clears throat> that is direct knowledge from God of things previously unknown to us. In other words, Scripture. That's what revelation is. But Scripture tells us in 2 Timothy that Scripture is sufficient for every good work, which means the revelation is complete. 
So to claim that you have new revelation is to contradict what we know to be revelation and therefore leads us to this conclusion. Either the one claiming to receive revelation is lying or scripture is lying. I'll, I'll put my trust in scripture. Thank you. And it was a prophetic word I was living out. And uh, I did get a um, hit pretty hard. I, I just call it affliction. Uh, I didn't tell people because during the entire process of about five years, I didn't miss a beat on anything. I never missed a daily prophetic. I never missed our webcast. I never missed anything. Thanks to my team. Uh, it's here. And uh, 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 as well as the Lord. And in the midst of that, I was down for four years. Uh, but the Lord increased us four times, literally four times on the Internet, four times financially, four times with followers, four times with favor. And in the midst of that, God blessed us amazingly. Uh, the understanding of my affliction, I couldn't understand it. Uh, but then I started working through some some things. The doctors, I want to tell you, if the doctors don't know what it is, it's a demon. Remember when Jesus or none of the apostles said that? Is this guy claiming he was possessed by a demon as a believer in Christ? He is in Christ, but he has a demon. A demon was in Christ. You know, there's a reason Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Balliol? For what per portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Running blood tests or doing things. I went everywhere, I tell you. Trying, uh, trying to get healed. And I knew it had a demonic, uh, you know, some root to that. And The Holy Spirit was living in the same temple as a demon. Is is that what you're telling us? And I had to work through some things, which I'm going to unpack a little bit more later and tonight, by the way, about how to get healed. But the, just to finish this testimony is that uh, I really didn't understand it. But I knew that I was living something out so that others would be able to walk through the healing much faster. He was suffering for other people. Well, wasn't that nice of him? The case of Huntington's disease. My, uh, my ministry started just a few weeks after I got healed of Huntington's, all the symptoms. And he had to correct himself there and say he got healed of the symptoms because Huntington's is a hereditary disease. In order to be healed of the disease, one has to have their DNA altered. That's why he corrected himself and said he'd been healed of the symptoms. 2001, we, we started In Light Connection. Uh, Huntington's is a terrible disease. It, it took out my mom, my aunt, my two uncles, my brother, sister. They're all in heaven. What did they do wrong? Why did God heal you and not them? Do you know something they didn't? Uh, maybe it was the miracle blanket. Or, or maybe God's word wasn't sufficient for them like Paul said it was. Doubt a huge, huge part of my family. And that wounded my heart. My soul got wounded and that's where the enemy was attacking me in that area. And that's part of why I, my affliction hit me is that unhealed soul wounds where that gives the doorway to the enemy. I remember that's just like when, um, oh wait, like when none of the writers of scripture said that. And this guy is claiming secret knowledge. Peter and Jude had a few things to say about folks who claim special secret knowledge. Uh, they say they're under the condemnation of God. And so I had to walk through that. And even though the Lord, uh, the Lord was healing me of, of these things, Huntington's was my first documented healing, but then it started looking like everyone thought I had it again. It's documented, you say. He, he's lying, and that will come out shortly. As I said, the only way to be rid of Huntington's is if your DNA is altered. It's literally embedded in your DNA. Has this man's DNA changed? Well, he'll he'll answer that shortly. My whole family, everyone thought I had it again. I was manifesting things. 
that looked like it, but I, I was standing in faith that I didn't. And so uh, just two years ago, or last year, they, they, they put, uh, put me and Linda as well uh, in a study at the UCLA Medical Center because I'm, I'm going to be 60 years old uh, in uh, less than three months, thank God. And usually, normally, in fact, based on my family, based on my CAG count, based on all that stuff, medically, there's no remission for this disease. There's nothing. It's, it's like Parkinson's on steroids. Uh, and it uh, usually hits in the 30s and 40s. 50s is kind of weird. And 60s, a very short life. My mom, who was an amazing evangelist, uh, went to heaven way before her time. And you all went right around the 60s. If she went to heaven, she did not go before her time. Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that the judgment appointed, God says, it's fixed. I'm just saying that I'm turning 60, and they just said it was an anomaly, which is medical for miracle. Up until now, they've never been able to document my miracle. Wait a minute, you just said it was documented. Huntington's was my first documented healing, but up until now, they've never been able to document my miracle. Huntington's was my first documented healing. One of the hallmarks of a false teacher is that they lie. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 13, 2 Timothy 4, 3, 2 Peter uh, 2, 1 through 3, Colossians 2, 8, Romans 16, 17, 2, Peter, or 2 Timothy 3, 13. I've never, you won't see me on TV. I filled out all kinds of forms for years. I'd fill out those forms, you know, to be on CB and TB and all the BNs. And the, uh, they would never be able to document that miracle. Huntington's was my first documented healing. But well, now we're moving towards being able to. The Lord did tell me that there's a day coming when my DNA will change. See what I mean? His, his DNA has not been changed. He is not cured of Huntington's. He, he's lying. His mouth is full of lies for shameful gain, just like scripture says all false teachers are. You go to his website and you can activate your life purpose for $37, guaranteed. You can get clarity when God speaks for $21. You can learn how to open the book of your life for $37. You can learn how to release blessings and break curses for $37. You can encounter heaven for $37. You can unlock your prophetic activation for $44. You can unlock your breakthrough for $77. Oh, hey, you can learn how to prophetically interpret tattoos and piercings for $79. There's not a single thing on his side about Jesus. Nothing about the gospel. But there's a lot about money. In fact, nearly every link you click on asks you for money. I had such a radical healing encounter that I went back and got retested a second time and they laughed at me because they said no one's DNA has ever changed. Huntington's was my first documented healing, but that's when the Lord said, I'm going to tell you when to get tested again, but I tell you, your DNA is going to change. The Lord told him this. The Lord revealed something to him for our benefit. Uh, Doug said himself, he went through all this for our benefit. Even though God says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, that scripture is sufficient for every good work. Now, in the Greek, the word used for sufficient means, well, sufficient. Uh, the word used for every means, yes, every. Scripture is sufficient for every good work. Now, now, Doug has this new information from God for people with Huntington's. Now, Huntington's disease was discovered in 1872. For around 150 years, Christians were living with this disease. Doug's own family, his mother, without this information that they had the scriptures, but the scriptures weren't sufficient for this particular work. They didn't have this revelation. So then the scriptures were not sufficient for them, were they? Uh, of course they were. Of, of course they are. Which is easier to believe, that God was not telling the truth in 2 Timothy? That what he meant to say was, all scripture is sufficient for every good work, except to those that will die of Huntington's disease in about 1900 years? 
that those folks will have to do without until I tell Doug Addison some stuff? Or is it easier to believe that Doug Addison is lying? I, I know it's easier for me to believe. I hope it is for you too. And so this weird, whatever it was that hit me, it looked like Lyme disease. I had multiple chemical sensitivity so bad. I was exiled from my house, basically. I became allergic to my wife, my car, my house. The Bible. I was allergic to my clothes. Uh, and I couldn't wear my clothes this is back in uh, t uh, 2016. And I was finally driven from my house. Many people with uh, uh, MC, uh, the multiple chemical sensitivity or environmental illness, uh, many people go to Arizona because it's a dry climate. Plus, uh, the most anointed people I know live there. So Patricia King, Katie Souza helped me. Hey, Patricia King and Katie Souza know a thing or two about changing your DNA. Patricia King believes in werewolves. And I said, so what types of experiences have you had? And she shared a few. And so then I said to her, I said, listen, have you ever had an experience with a werewolf? And she said, no, but I've read about them. So I said, well, I have. She says, you have? Katie Souza believes in sea monsters. And I went up higher on the cliff to look down and I saw that the water was teeming. It was teeming with uh, crocodiles, alligators, and sharks. And she was down at the water not paying attention and I said, you need to get away from the edge of the water. I mean it. And I was yelling to her and all of a sudden all the crocodiles and alligators came up and started rushing her. And instead of running away from them, she dove stri straight into the water in the midst of this pack of alligators. And they started chasing her and she finally got out of the water and ran away and I'm running towards her are completely attacking her, attaching themselves to the back of her neck and everything else. It was crazy. Their ministries, plus my assistant April, stepped up and I mean, I just had nowhere to go. Joan was praying for me. They got me the prayer blanket. They, everything started coming together. And then I had a breakthrough oh, yeah. on the chemical, the chemical sensitivity. And it was a broken heart. Wait a minute, I thought you said a broken heart was how demons get inside you unhealed soul wounds where that gives the doorway to the enemy it was it was from you you could actually come to a place if you get a broken heart a wounded heart you can come to a place where where act and the enemy can give you uh, uh access you through the wounded heart oh well, your breakthrough whatever that is it, it came from the devil I'm, I'm i'm confused i'm so confused you know what's not confusing the word of god also the number one uh, killer, according to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, is heart attacks. Did you know this? Is that, that um, Jesus even said about the end times in Matthew 24, he said that it will become so bad, men's hearts will fail them. That's actually Luke chapter 21, that the first time he mentions scripture, he doesn't get the citation right. Uh, Luke 21, 26. Jesus says, men's hearts will be failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. It's, it's not talking about heart attacks. When the word heart is used in scripture, it's never talking about the organ, you see. The Jewish concept of the heart was the soul, the center of a person. Men's hearts, their center will be falling apart. It's talking about their, they'll be afraid. They'll be full of cowardice. And that we're in this time right now. I was living out a prophetic word that I'm going to release today. This about not just the wounded heart, but in the access of the enemy, but a bigger, way bigger plan that's been exposed on how to get healed, how to get set free financially and how to step into your destiny. He's gonna release it, he says. He's gonna, it, it's gonna explode. This is something that they haven't known for 2,000 years in the church. Even though the Bible says God's word is sufficient for every good work, I guess except for your healing, your financial freedom, and your stepping into your destiny. Uh, all those millions of Christians for 2,000 years with an insufficient revelation from God, which is more reasonable, that God did not tell the truth in Scripture or that this guy's making stuff up. And 
So my chemical sensitivity got, once I got that revelation, got my heart healed. Within 30 days, I was back home. I was wearing my clothes. Uh, you know, I, I was just, I just came back. But then my immune system crashed for another year. I was walking around with blankets on like this. I was walking around with piles of coats on, living in California. My immune system had crashed. Then the Lord gave me the healing strategy for that as well. This is Stratego. Now, whatever this strategy is, bear in mind that Christ Church has been over 2,000 years now without it. In 1 Peter chapter 1, the apostle tells us that scripture is a more sure word of prophecy than even their own personal experiences with Jesus. But more sure that is until Doug Addison came along and 2,000 years later with this new explosion of revelation. And at February 14th of 2018, I got healed of all of that. I stepped out and into full healing that I've stepped in. And by the way, a few, uh, just uh, a few days later, after that happened, after the healing happened, uh, all of a sudden, everything came back online. Lou Engel uh, contacted me. I never talked to him before and contacted me and said that there was, a, there was one of his intercessors had a dream that myself, that me, Lou Engel, and Keith Ferrante, three prophets from the West Coast, uh, were all speaking as one voice over the revival that was going to start in California and move around the world. So we went out and called a 50-day fast. And uh, I couldn't fast. I, I'm, I know this uh, shirt makes me look fat. Uh, but uh, I couldn't fast. So I did my kind of fast. I was fasting from negativity. And that's what I'm calling people to. So we went out and did that. Uh, and so in other words, what I'm saying is, the Lord's releasing revelation right now. You know, in the epistle of Jude, we read that we are to earnestly contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. But apparently it wasn't really once delivered. It was delivered again here by this guy. And, and apparently it wasn't for all because all the sick and the poor and the people who weren't walking in their destiny for 2,000 years didn't get to hear any of this revelation from God. He's, there, there's things that we don't understand that we put in a box. We put God so heavy in a box. Ah, these false teachers love saying that, don't they? You put God in a box. Well, I mean, in a sense, God puts himself in a box when he reveals his, himself to us in his word. Uh, Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 says he revealed himself to us in the scriptures. If you want to know who I am, look here, he says. Don't be looking at all these other things. I will tell you who I am. You're not allowed to look anywhere else. This is what I will have you know about me. Hebrews goes on to say that his ultimate and final revelation of who he is is the person of Jesus Christ, uh, whom we have heard, we've heard nothing about in this guy's revelation. Now, what does that tell you? It tells you everything. And he, we've labeled that box. Well, I actually saw the box uh, labeled the rapture. And the rapture understanding of waiting to get out of here and not doing the work has then killed the, killed the harvest. Now, I believe there's a second coming of Jesus, but he, he said it. Hey, listen, that's what he kept telling me. He says, there's a billion people on the list. When God was telling you stuff, did he mention the gospel at all? Or, you know, just, just stuff about changing your DNA and fasting from negativity and miracle blankets and whatnot? So what's in your bag? This and that, toothpaste and whatnot. They need to come. A billion need to come. A billion soul harvest. Need to come where? To, to, your, to your website? What are you talking about? See your prophet Bob Jones now in heaven? No, Bob Jones is not in heaven. He was a false teacher, a wannabe prophet. And they defrocked him. You know why? Because he made female parishioners undress in front of them as part of his prophetic impartation. This guy loves dropping names, doesn't he? Names of false prophets. 
But what have we heard about the true prophet, the last prophet, our Lord Jesus Christ? He gave his entire life. That's what he had. The billion so harvest. Y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. He met a face-to-face -face encounter, said it would happen. And he went back to heaven uh, on uh, February 14th, 2014, and it didn't happen because the church wouldn't step up to do the work. So God told the sexual pervert Bob Jones that something was going to happen, and it didn't happen. Okay, so do I believe God told a sexual pervert something was going to happen and it didn't happen? Or do I believe the sexual pervert is lying? I'm saying that as, I'm not in judgment, I'm saying that as the Lord told me, he said too many Christians have been praying the prayer of Jabez. And I'm answering that prayer, which is to expand me, bless me, and no pain, please. So all those Christians who thought that the word of God that says scripture is sufficient for every good work, scripture was not sufficient to correct their error until God decided to talk to Doug Addison. You can't. No, it doesn't work that way. There's nothing in the Bible that I can find that was no pain. No pain, no gain, no. Uh, really. Really? So now he's, he's adhering to the regulatory principle. There's nothing in the Bible about miracle blankets either. Nothing in the Bible about soaking up someone's anointing. There's nothing in the Bible about shipping someone's anointing through the mail. Nothing in the Bible about points of contact. There's nothing about an undiagnosable illness being a demon. There, there's nothing about the devil entering you through a soul wound. Uh, the Bible doesn't say anything about breakthrough, nothing about fasting from negativity, but the Bible does say a lot about Jesus. It says a lot about the gospel. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you. Let me testify about my Lord. 22 years ago, I woke up in my apartment, half naked, having drunk myself almost to death. I noticed that I was cold and I felt something on my face. What was I lying in? I stumbled to my feet and I went to the mirror and I turned on the light and this very distinguished, eloquent preacher lost and without Jesus, had slept the entire night in his own vomit. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He has saved me when I was such a wretch you would not have wanted to run me down with your car. But my Jesus, he bought me with his blood. And my Jesus, he came to me, and my Jesus took away my sin, and my Jesus took away my shame. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. That's my Jesus, and I glory in my weakness and I glory, yea, even in my sin. Sometimes young men will ask me, Brother Paul, what's the secret? How is it that you preach the way you do? How is it, Brother Paul, that you talk about things like that? How is it that we see the power of God? What's your secret, Brother Paul? He found me in a pool of vomit. That's my secret. That there are not many wise or noble. I am the cheapest of all sinners. I was the lowest of the low. And that's what Jesus does. That's my secret. I had nothing. That's my secret. And you were probably much prettier than me on the outside, but I can assure you, you were not any prettier than me on the inside. 
they say to me, they say, how do you pray like that? How do you preach like that? I mean, what, what, what did you learn in your devotional time? No, you don't understand. He saved me. He saved me. Where's that great motivation? Did you get it from some verse you read? You don't understand. He saved me from what I was. There's no key, except I was the worst in the pack. He saved me. What else needs to be done to motivate me? What else needs to be done? Is it salvation enough?